What's going on, everybody? Thank you all for joining me today. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like button because that's the most important thing you can do for me on this channel. What it does is that it helps make sure that those who are subscribed to the channel will indeed get the notifications, and it also helps to push this video through the YouTube algorithm as well. Next, if you're new to the channel or maybe you've been ghost watching this channel for quite some time now, I see you guys, please. Do me a favor and yourself a favor by hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. And lastly, please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms to your family and friends to inform them on this news and information. And yes, that does help to give me a slight boost in the YouTube algorithm as well. And with the introduction out of the way, let's get into today's news. And today we have to take a trip over to CNN studios because recently there was a New York Times reporter on CNN who was discussing the fact and really, you can say kind of the sad reality of how Kamala Harris is just, let's just be plain, a horrible speaker. She's a tragically horrible speaker, especially when we're talking about speaking unscripted. And this is something that he exposed as someone who has interviewed Kamala Harris before. He speaks on this on CNN, and they're specifically addressing the fact that today there's going to be an interview airing that was pre-recorded, of course, of Kamala Harris on CNN. But the problem is that she has Tim Wall sitting next to her the entire time. And what that shows and indicates is that Kamala Harris really cannot carry her own weight and she can't carry her own water. She needs somebody there with her to coach her along and to kind of help fill up the time because God forbid she speaks on her own unscripted. She's going to break out in laughter and cackling and fumbling and bumbling all over the place and then resort to her default statements such as, what is it again? Ah, it's slipping my mind for a moment. Uh, unburdened by what has been so we can see what has has been done or something silly like that. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know, she'll fall into this default mode where she just starts repeating her memorized script. Uh, and it typically just looks and sounds really bad. So let's get into what the New York Times reporter had to say. And then we'll come back afterwards to really unpack what it is that he was talking about concerning Kamala Harris. So let's jump into that right now. Um, instead, why do, you, uh, why do you think they're doing it together and not by herself? Well, I don't think it's a secret. Democrats over the last couple of years have increasingly thought that they can go directly to their voters. And I think have frankly been fairly uh, uh, slow to coming around to doing mainstream traditional interviews. We've heard the Biden campaign now turn the Harris campaign uh, complain repeatedly about reporters trying to ask those type of questions have stayed away from more traditional media interviews as they've tried to go to influencers, tried to go to, to podcasts that are more friendly venues for them. And they found real success with that. I think what is coming happening now, though, is there is an onus on Harris and Walls to differentiate themselves from the Biden ticket. There's open questions about what their vision would be, what their... I have to pause him there. I wanted to let him finish out all the way, but I don't want to forget this. He said that they've been going to influencers and having success with that. Can you really call it success when you're paying for the influencers to, you know, be positive towards you? and show you in a spot in a positive light. Now, Democratic organizations are flooding the creator community with cash and providing behind the scenes access. Come with me to meet the president of the United States. We just have to be working with them. And if we're not, we're missing a huge way that voters are getting information about the world. Rob Flaherty runs Digital Strategy, previously in the Biden White House, and now for the Harris campaign. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> he called the highly memeable Harris a massive asset as the campaign reaches out to thousands of influencers. What kind of coaching do you give influencers acting on behalf of the Harris campaign? Talking points, resources, base language. While Flaherty says the Harris campaign does not pay influencers directly, CBS News found a constellation of other Democratic political organizations that do. Essentially, you're paying for advertisement space with these influencers. So has it really been positive or is it fake love? right? Is it just simply advertising? I would definitely push back on that statement that he just made concerning them going to social media influencers and finding success with that. I think that success is a fraudulent success. It's not a genuine success. It is not the equivalent of the success that Trump has seen when he goes on these podcasts. Like I believe the guy's name is uh, Theo Vaughn. Um, and there's a couple of other really young podcasters who are in their early 20s. One of them, I forgot his name off the top of my head, 
but he went and saw him and that podcast got 10 million views pretty much everywhere he goes he gets 10 million views on these podcasts uh but he's not paying them to come on the podcast right trump isn't paying them to say something nice about him it's a genuine interaction where with kamala harris she's literally paying to play when it comes to social media influencers. So once again, that's where I'd push back with him on that. But I'll let him finish out his statement and then we'll jump back into it. To differentiate themselves from the Biden ticket, there's open questions about what their vision would be, what their legislative priorities would be. And while the Democratic convention was an advertisement for the party writ large, a lot of the things people were saying on stage could have been just the same if it was President Biden as the nominee rather than Kamala Harris. What an interview does is put the onus on her, not just for the mastery of issues and kind of command of issues, but to lay out a vision. That is something that uh, Kamala Harris has been fairly uncomfortable with. Speaking as someone who has interviewed her, that's not necessarily her where she likes to be. She often says, I'm not someone who's good at uh, speeches. I'm someone who gets things done. Now, we know as president, that's a big core part of the job is to lay out that kind of vision. Obviously, in a two-person, when you have a two-person interview, you know, and you have a limited amount of time, yeah. it does limit the interviewer's ability. I don't think this is going to be the last we hear of her, though. This is going to be the first, but I do think that question of can she do it alone will loom, and they will have to be able to, to put her out in spaces where she is answering confrontational questions and laying out her vision by herself. If this is all we get in terms of her along with Walls, I do think those questions will ring out further. I'm not so sure that we're going to get more from her after this original CNN interview, especially if her polling just kind of stables out and maintains somewhat the way that it is now. You know, it might dip down a little bit, but as long as she continues to maintain a lead, I don't really see what the incentive is for her to put herself out there when she knows she sucks at speaking and she knows that she doesn't want to defend any of these policies that her and Biden put forth during these last four years. She knows she doesn't want to answer for any of her policy choices back when she was the AG and DA here in California and in San Francisco. She doesn't want to speak to any of these things. And she's definitely not going to put herself in a position where she gets asked very hard questions and what one would consider hostile territory from someplace like a Fox News, where they're going to ask you, hey, What's up with you flip-flopping on the border wall and stealing Trump's policies concerning the border wall? What's up with you stealing Trump's policies concerning no tax on tips? How do you answer that, right? How do you answer those kind of questions? She's not going to put herself in that position. And I think that that actually could possibly be her Achilles heel in the very end. Though it looks like the polling isn't changing really at all for her, which is very odd. The polling has been very odd in and of itself with the way in which she just seemingly skyrocketed past Trump um, and seemingly just is not coming down. But when you have someone like Trump who's added a RFK Jr. to his team, he's added a Tulsi Gabbard to his team. And you're talking about what you need to do is grab a hold of the independent voter and the undecided voter, I think that that will bite her in the behind in the very end concerning undecideds and independents. When they head into that voting booth and they have to think about who they want office as commander in chief and the reality sets in that if this woman can't even sit down to do an unscripted interview with friendly reporters, forget Fox News, she won't even allow herself to be, you know, uh, she won't even allow herself to be uh, interviewed by George Stephanopoulos for crying out loud. You know, if you won't allow yourself to have a sit down with somebody like him, how are you going to have a sit down with Vladimir Putin? How are you going to speak with what's his name? Xi Jinping? How are you going to sit down with any of these other world leaders? If you can't even have a sit down interview by yourself solo on CNN, where once again, you're on friendly territory. This CNN interview is going to be nothing but softball questions, and she's going to have Tim Walls taking up most of the time. So if you can't do that on your own, how can we expect you to govern on your own in any real capacity, especially when we're talking about sitting down with other leaders of the world and other strong-willed, strong-minded men? How are you going to hold your own? That strong independent woman stuff is going to unravel very quickly. And the reality is, is that it's already unraveled now because she's going to do an interview on CNN friendly territory with a man, not by herself, with a man by her side to help her carry her to help her carry her water. 
she can't carry the water on her own. And with all that being said, that does it for today's news. We'll see how this interview plays out later on this evening. I'm definitely going to be covering it uh, going forward starting tomorrow morning. Uh, so we'll see how everything goes. We'll see how everything goes. But with all that being said, thank you all for your time. Please hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Share this video on your social media platforms. And also don't forget to follow me on Telegram and YouTube. That is extremely important that you follow me on Telegram and YouTube. Both my Telegram and YouTube link will be in the description box below as well as pinned in the comment section as well. Thank you all for your time and until the next video peace and have a great afternoon